Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB AI Tester Certification. We are in Chapter 8 talking about testing AI specific quality characteristics and moving on to our next segment which is 8.6 Testing the Transparency, Interpretability and Explainability of AI Based Systems. Well, again, to talk about these three parameters in this particular segment, all we are trying to understand is what exactly it takes to test these parameters of AI-based systems and what are the challenges related to it. So information on how the system has been implemented may be provided by the system developers. This may include the sources of training data, how labeling was conducted, and how the system components have been designed. When this information is not available, it can make the design of tests very challenging. The very first and foremost point they're trying to convey you here is that having the understanding of how exactly the system was implemented is one information that is like control flow, the workflow and the interactions and interfaces, etc. Talking about the training data, which is very, very important, which helps you understand how the model has been trained and what kind of algorithmic issues have been observed in past. If in case these information are unavailable, it certainly brings you a lot of challenges to build up the required set of tests to evaluate it. Now, for example, if training data information is not available, then identifying potential gaps in such data and testing the impact of those gaps certainly becomes difficult. The situation can be compared to a black box and white box testing and has similar advantages and disadvantages. That means when you don't have any visibility, you don't have any information, you can compare yourself as a black box tester here, given that you have the understanding of what the product is all about and how, what it is built upon, you are trying to say that you're doing white box testing, right? So it's it's very important for a tester to understand, you, though, though you may not be running the test on the back end or at the coding level, but having understanding of behind the screen helps you a lot to understand what exactly to test. Transparency can be tested by comparing the information documented on the data and algorithm to the actual implementation and determine, determining how closely they match. So that's about transparency, keeping it very transparent between the information, what you use to train the model, and on the other side, what exactly is being used for testing it. With ML, it can often be more difficult to explain the link between a specific input and a specific output than with the conventional systems. The low level of explainability is primarily because the model generating the output is itself generated by the code, which is algorithm, and does not reflect the way humans think about a problem. Different ML models provide different levels of explainability and should be selected based on the requirement for the system, which may include explainability and testability. So explainability, again, we are we have covered about these words, these terminologies earlier in our session, but explainability is more about how detailed you have the information given to you between every single thing and aspects of an AI-based system. So here we took the example of understanding the link between the specific input and the desirable specific output. If this particular information is not being detailed, not explained precisely, then we don't have any clarity or any, any kind of understanding what exactly it does, right? And that brings a lot of challenges related to bringing up the right set of tests too. One method to understand the explainability is through the dynamic testing of the ML model, when applying perturbation to the test data. Method exists for quantifying explainability in this manner and for providing visual explanations of it. So that gives you a better understanding. So all we are trying to say that the explanation uh, can be achieved or can be obtained until you know once you start interacting with the system. So the more you interact with the system, the better you have the desirable outputs and it makes totally, you know, some kind of information given to you, which helps you build understanding about it, that how exactly the system will work and what more can be done here. So more importantly, a tester should have all the details what is required in order to build the required test so that we don't have any gaps left out. So one method of uh, understanding explainability is this. Some of these methods are model agnostic, 
while others are specific to a particular type of models and require access to it. Exploratory testing can also be used to better understand the relationship between inputs and outputs of the model because here you can always go ad hoc, like you can go with anything which is not written, so you will have better extent towards interacting with the system and define the right explainability for it. So exploratory testing certainly adds a lot when it comes to if you face any challenges related to explainability, uh, you can always look forward to, you know, start kick a start for the exploratory testing to get better hold of it. Well, to continue further, of course, uh, the LIME method, uh, LIME method here means that it, it basically stands for Local Interpretable Model Agnostic Explanations, which is a AI standard for uh, all the explainability and interpretability. So when it comes to the LIME method, it is model agnostic and, and uses dynamically injected input perturbation and the analysis of outputs to provide tester with a view of relationship between inputs and outputs. This can be an effective method for providing model explainability. However, it is limited to providing possible reasons for the output rather than a definitive reason and is not applicable for all types of algorithm. So LIME is one of the method being recommended here which can be used to determine the overall um, interpretabilities or explainability of the AI-based systems. But at the same time, we are just trying to say that it is limited to providing possible reasons for the output rather than definitive reason. So possible, you know, certain bunch of examples will be or reasons will be provided to you that on what basis did you just have this output. But there will be no precise output or there will be no definitive reason that why exactly did you have this output for the algorithm. So certainly, uh, you know, we, we do understand that AI is a domain where you know, teams and organizations are still working and exploring more about it. But as far as we have the informations, we are trying to do our best. But uh, as soon as like we get more better deep dive and upfront techniques to help you to bring, bring better testing, we will certainly be adding those to the syllabus too. But point being made is at this point of time, there are certain challenges with whatever the techniques and whatever approaches we are trying to use. So AI is a domain which is not just you know, well-established or given with everything what you really need. So you just can't apply the fundamental psychology of testing a simple application to the AI-based system. The interpretability of AI-based system is heavily dependent on who this applies to. Different stakeholders may have different requirements in terms of how well they need to grasp the underlying technology. So here, interpretability of an AI system is completely dependent on uh, who this applies to, like the target audience or you know the different stakeholders, which will determine the, what is their key expectations and requirements from this. So interpretability totally goes in line with that. Uh, measuring and testing the level of understanding for both inter interpretability and explainability, explainability can be challenging as stakeholders will vary in their levels of ability and may not agree to that. In addition, identifying the profile for typical stakeholders may be difficult for many types of systems where performed. This testing typically takes the form of user surveys or questionnaires. So put together, of course, there are several things which we can talk about, which would help us to determine that, hey, there are still several challenges what we are looking at and can, you know, be dealt with given that you have good information available from a broadest range of stakeholder because a limited set of uh, stakeholder may not be giving you all that what you really need to know about what are you trying to test, right? So put together, this is all what we had from this particular segment team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.